What's going on, everyone? You're welcome once again to David Data Channel. I'm really excited to have you here. On today's video, we're going to be continuing our DBT series, and we're going to be talking about one of the materializations in DBT, which is referred to as incremental materializations or incremental models. If it's your first time here, I'm really excited to have you here. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for stopping by. If you've missed our DBT series video, you can check that up in the link above and in the link in the description below as well and other series we're talking about. All right, so first of all, let's talk about what incrementals are all about. DBT comes with four materializations. We have the table materialization, the view materialization, ephemeral materialization, and incremental materialization. Of course, you understand what tables and views are. But then when it comes to incremental models, what really are incremental models? Why do we need them and why should we care about them? So think about this. You know, you could have your facts table that are usually, usually very, very large. For some businesses, they could run to millions of billions of records, right? And you do not want to always recreate these tables each time that model is being run. Because when you do the DBT run, you know, DBT um, does it drop the tables and then create that tables again, either if it's a table, if it's materialized as a table, and um, if it's a view, it drops it and creates it again. And um, typically, when this happens, you are going to run those millions of rows over and over again. This could have impact on the runtime. This could also have impact on cost as well. Because, you know, in your modern data warehouses, storage is very cheap right now. But what is expensive is computation. So you want to ensure that you're not bringing in unnecessary bills for your organizations. And one of those things, or one of the ways you can do this for your materializations that are very large, for your large tables, would be to do your incremental models. Okay, so think about incremental just the same way you would think about your extract load when you are loading data from your source into your data warehouse. Um, typically, you do it in one of two ways. Either you do a batch load uh, or an incremental load. Now, when we say batch load, it means uh, for every time you load data into your data warehouse, it's going to drop your previous um, data there and then just do a full snapshot, right? It's going to put the snapshot at every time. If it's 50 billion um, records, you're going to just take it off and put it at the same time. But I want to say incremental, you're going to use a uh, an updated date field or unique ID such that records that come in after your last um, updated date, those are the records, that, those are the only records that will be added to your data warehouse. Now that's the same logic that comes with your incremental model. So let's jump to my screen now and look at them DBT documentations on how incremental models are built. And then we're going to build one using Snowflake for our case. All right, so once more, please don't forget to like, hit the subscribe button, and also the notification bell so you can be notified once a new video drops in. Okay, so we're now on DBT's um, documentation. It says incremental models are built as tables in your data warehouse. Uh, the first time a model is run, it's built as a table, and um, it transforms all rows of your source data. And then on subsequent runs, DBT transforms only the rows in your source data that you tell DBT to filter on. So on subsequent runs, it doesn't run everything. It just runs only the rows that are just coming in for the first time based on the setting filter that you have placed on your uh, DBT incremental run. So um, we're going to be using a very simple table we created on Snowflake, uh, just about six rows of data. And then I'm going to insert, after, I, after we do the first part of creating that as, as an incremental model, we are going to um, now um, add some rows into it and then do another run again. So um, for your materializations, I believe you're already familiar with this. You can um, materialize your models using your config block. So we're going to be using the config block in our case. Uh, so if you go to our IDE, I've already added this Snowflake data as a source on our models, and I'm sure you understand this already. Um, so this is materialized currently as a table. I'm going to change this materialization right now to incremental. Okay. And then I save this. And I'm going to add the if incremental macro. So it's incremental macro rather. So yeah, this is it. And um, this is what this is how DBT knows that your model is an incremental model. After you've had added your um, materialized block, DBT uses this to know that um, this is an incremental model. So I'm going to take this, copy this and bring this in here and then use it to explain. Okay, so this incremental macro, what's it saying? It's saying that if is incremental, uh, this filter will only be applied on an incremental run. Where event time? Now, event time is your date field. 
All right, so for us here, our date time, our, our date column we are interested in using for our incremental would be our date updated. Most times, your updated date, uh, the dates that um, an event was updated, you want to use that to do your incremental load. Uh, where dates updated is greater than select max. So the maximum date in our date updated from this. Now, this 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 macro here referred to as this is referring to this R uh, model. So it's saying that if it is incremental, filter it by the where the date updated is greater than the max date updated from this model. So anywhere that we have a new date that is um, greater than the maximum updated date, that is those are the rules that will be added to our subsequent build of our incremental model. So we're going to save this, and then we're going to do a full refresh. So we're going to do a dbt run full refresh. Because we want it to be built afresh, right? Um, and then we select this particular model, um, my model, and then we run this. Okay, successful. So we can see from the logs that DBT just created this guy as a simple table. Yeah, and everyone is happy. So I'm quickly, I'm going to just add in some um, new records to this data. To the source data right this guy is is the source here right this uh is, is reading from this guy my source right i'm just i'm going to add some new records to this uh, my sales data on snowflake and then i'm going to come again and run this model again all right so as you can see right now i've inserted two new rows into our data and if we run this um raw data here on snowflake we find we now have about um nine records now right i've added these two new records okay so if we run our dbt transform model in our data warehouse which is my model in my dbt underscore db data schema um, we find that we just have seven records here so our model has been defined to be an incremental model right so we're going to just do a dbt run right now right so let's see a dbt run select my model and dbt um, would now do an insert update on this uh, incremental model using our filter and then um, see this successful so if you find this um so we find this now so it says when matched then update set when not match then insert so it says when we find a match based on the id update it when we don't find a match based on the id insert that value into your model so we can see that this is really how dbt builds your incremental model and it saves you lots of things especially cost right you don't have to build all your millions of records over and over again for every dbt run let's say your model is this um, is triggered to run once a day you don't have to do your 50 million records every time you just have to add the you just have to run the um incremental additions that come into your record so there's more to your dbt incremental models right uh, in terms of strategy um, depending on your um, data warehouse snowflake um, there's a mesh strategy there's um okay wh what do we have all right so depending on your data warehouse there are different strategies that you could use for your data warehouse um, for postgres redshift bigquery on snowflake the default strategy is merge which is what we just use we just use a merge right it's if it is so as you can as you could see on that logs if the id exists already it's updated if it doesn't exist anymore if it doesn't exist at all it inserts that new record into your data warehouse there are several benefits like we mentioned earlier for using your incremental models and then um, as you get to use it depending on your data use case you would know how to tweak it more to fit your data use case I hope you got a thing or two out of this video. Please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section as well. So we meet again in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.